Session management is an essential concept when you're creating a UI application with a backend and you want to create a session when you establish a secure channel between the UI and the backend. Usually, a session ID is created when we want to maintain a session and these session IDs get created by the backend application and then they are transferred to the UI and the UI uses the header to transfer that session ID back to the backend. Now, what happens when the backend application goes for a restart or when we do a new application deployment? The session ID gets wiped off from the cache. So we need a way to store these session IDs into a persistent store in order to restore that in a new instance. In this particular video, we are going to leverage Spring Session Redis to store the session management key within Redis. Now let's look at the architecture of how we are going to build it. I'm going to create a new session management app. I'll be adding the Spring Security Library because I want to show you how to create a session. So if I access a slash hello endpoint, it will be redirected to slash login. So I'll be able to create a session ID using the slash login. Spring Boot is going to create a default password for us by default. So I'm going to use that itself. And once it, I log in, a session ID gets created. We are going to use the Spring Data Redis and Spring Session Data Redis to store the session ID within Redis. Spring Data Redis is used to convert the session information into a persistable information into Redis. And Spring Session Redis will create the necessary sessions and the keys within Redis out of the box. We don't have to write any piece of information or code within the Spring Boot application when we enable all these in one go. Now let's get into the implementation part. I'm in the Spring Initializer. I'll be using the uh, Maven project. Java is the language. I'm going to use the 2.7.6 uh, version of Spring Boot. The group is com tech primers. Artifact, I'm going to call it as session management example. I'm going to use the packaging, which is jar, and I'm going to use the Java 11 version. I'll be adding the dependencies. Like I mentioned, I'm going to add Spring Security. I'll be adding Spring Sessions, right? So there is a Spring Session, which I'm going to add. So I'll be using the Redis uh, for storing. So I'll just say Spring Data Redis. This is what I'm going to use. And uh, finally, I also want to expose an endpoint, right? So I'm going to use the Spring Web. I'm going to use the Spring MVC. I'm not going to use the reactive one. So let's generate this project and open it in IntelliJ. So the project is open. My dependencies are clean. Let me go to the POM. I'll show you what are the dependencies which we added. We added the uh, Spring Boot Start Data Redis. We added the security, the Spring Boot security or the Spring security. We added the uh, Spring MVC and finally we added the Spring Session Data Redis. That's it. Now I'm going to add a new endpoint called as the hello controller just to keep it simple so this is an example so you can just replace it with whatever you want don't complain that i'm just using a hello world or something but it's similar to how you will do it in real world So I'm just saying hello YouTube, it's just returning a hello world, right? That's it. Uh, now if you see we have Redis by default, I can add some configuration details to Redis. So I can do a application YAML. I can create an application YAML. I can add the Spring Redis. I can provide the host information, the port information. I'm not going to provide anything because by default, I'm just going to use the host name, the local host and the local port. Uh, right this is like you can just provide the default ones 6379 i guess meanwhile i'll show you uh, let me go to the um, redis and show you the keys which are there so i'm going to use the redis cli uh, redis cli directly goes to redis and if i do a key st uh, star it shows that there is nothing right so right now we don't have anything in redis so let me go uh, this is like the same right 6379 is a port yeah 6379 is a port host is local host right that's it i'm going to run this application in 8080 so i think it should be fine that's all i don't need anything else uh, let's restart this server or let's start the server so this should now add spring security to the hello endpoint right also it should generate a password um, since i enable spring security so see here it generated a user generated password 
right uh, obviously this is for development purpose only right so i'm going to use this password to log in when it asks in the ui so yeah it has started in 8080 let me go back so i have 8080 and then slash hello you see that the uh, login page has come the default username is user and the password is what got generated in the console so i'm just using it and you can see that i'm getting the hello youtube now if i do an inspect of this page and if i uh, do a refresh you can see that there should be a uh, cookies so there should be a cookie which is the session cookie it gets created and if you see the request what we got in the header you should be able to see the uh, session id so see here the request header has the session id which is the session cookie now let's go back to uh, redis and then see if uh, redis has anything now notice that there are more keys now which got added i didn't do anything so there is a session key which is this uh, there are some expiry related information for the same session key there is also the principal which is the user uh, the principal name is the username uh, our username is user that's why it is stored so these are the four information which are stored right the expiration the expiration specific to the session itself and also the session id so this is the session id which we are using right so we have now stored the session key now let's try restarting the application the whole purpose of this particular um, usage is if i restart the spring boot application will it still be able to use my session right i mean i just restarted the application meanwhile if i go and query the uh, redis again you still should be able to see the same keys right uh, the application is up now if i refresh it should not ask me the password right because the headers are stored here see i refresh the page it did not ask me the password the request is still going through right so this basically means the browser stored the session id and the session id is stored in redis right um, that's what happened here so the browser stored the session id the session id is stored in redis so the application is reusing the session id from redis instead of recreating it right so this is how you can leverage redis to store the session id and the session keys now the next obvious question uh, which you get is what happens if my redis goes down right you can have redis in front of a uh, spring cloud gateway or a load balancer and in the load balancer you can have a circuit breaker which can return or which can do a fallback now what happens um, if you use a spring cloud gateway is if you add a spring cloud gateway you can configure a circuit breaker in the spring cloud gateway and if let's say redis returns um, a failure response it can fall back to another uh, empty cache right or it can return a cached in cached data right so maybe the application has the cache information we can just point it to it or we can create a dummy cache a spring boot application which maintains the cache in terms of fallback we can use that right or we can use the same application itself to fall back and then you reuse the same session id right we can do that as well so if you are interested in um, me making that video i can make that as a separate video because it requires us to understand the circuit breaker in the spring cloud gateway it's a separate topic in itself so i can create a spring cloud gateway in front of the redis so the session management app will talk to redis via the spring cloud gateway like we did in the rate limiter app um, example right there will be a spring cloud gateway the session management app will talk to the spring cloud gateway that will route the traffic to the redis now if if let's say spring cloud gateway retrieves a, a error message it will do a fallback to another endpoint right that's why spring cloud gateway is very powerful in terms of implementing circuit breaker at the api gateway level itself right so the application will not even know that the redis is down and the uh, spring cloud gateway will automatically route traffic to a different cached instance or even a different uh, dummy uh, cache or the existing session id it will reuse the existing session id as well now let me summarize this particular video so we added only the dependencies uh, for the spring security and the spring data redis with spring session so spring session is making the magic in terms of storing the session id specifically into redis it by default uses redis and if you want to fall back you can use a spring cloud gateway like i mentioned but in this video we just created a spring um, a redis we just created a spring boot application which can use session management using spring security we secured our endpoint by default um, right we just use the uh, default password for now but if you are using any other uh, mechanism security mechanism it's almost the same right the session id should get automatically stored inside redis since the spring data redis is plugged into the spring boot ecosystem it automatically gets your session id from your browser 
and automatically stores that in the Redis instance. And when you restart your application, still the Redis will like send the data back to the application. So you don't have to refresh or log out the user in terms of application deployment or maybe auto scaling or the traffic getting routed to multiple instances, etc. As always, this example is available in the GitHub. You can go and take a look at it. If you want me to make a video on any specific topic, do let me know in the comment section below. If you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.